Hello and welcome to Frontrunner Motorsport. And today was the Cape Town e -Prix. Another round of Formula E we have never seen before. The first time in South Africa. And honestly the track layout was really, really good. Really like the look of the track. I actually really like to see Formula 1 race around here. I thought we'd get attack mode out of the way first as it's been the main talking point of these videos recently. This was a much better way to do it. The cars lost a lot less time when they went for it and it therefore didn't really interfere with the racing too much. There was some swapping around here and there but generally here it worked better. And I think someone said it'd just be better if they just had the four minutes rather than you know, splitting it into either two two minutes or having one and three or three and one. I do think that's right. I think actually if they just did it once, had four minutes extra power, and that was it, I'd be a lot more comfortable with it. But as I said here, it just worked a lot better. So with that out of the way, this race was another insane offering from Formula E, which is kind of the catchphrase of the series at this point. Didn't start off great. There were five cars missing from the grid. And it was the Mahindra team and the Apt Cooper team. Both cars had their well, both cars had their cars pulled out. Both teams had their cars pulled out of the race due to safety concerns regarding flexing with the rear suspension, I think. Something to do with a part from a supplier not being not being able to cope with the extra bumps of the Cape Town circuit. This meant that, for the first time ever, Lucas Degrassi did not start a Formula E race. So I think he has entered all 105 e prix but he's now only started 104 of them. It's still a very impressive record. But because Apt Cooper get their cars from Mahindra, they also had to be pulled out, which was a shame for Kelvin van der Linde, who would have been racing in his home, his home e prix But it did also leave a lot of gaps on the grid. And Sam Bird in his Jaguar also had to pull out because of an accident in either qualifying or practice. Didn't actually see the crash, so I don't know what happened to him. But unfortunately, he wasn't able to start either. So we started off with 17 cars instead of 22, which is a little disappointing. But on safety grounds, obviously, it's the best thing to do. We don't want any accidents caused by something breaking when it could have been avoided, especially if someone got hurt. We lost two more cars pretty much straight away. Their line, I want to say, misjudged his braking. But honestly, it looks like he forgot to brake until the very last minute. He slammed into the back of Sebastian Buemi. And our championship leader was out of the race with damaged suspension. Buemi was able to continue. But it was a very strange one. He locked a brake, but it's just like his car didn't stop. I actually wondered if he had a brake problem or something. But apparently not. Apparently just misjudged it and slammed into Buemi. Very bad move for the guy who has been so good this year and was and still is leading the championship. And then shortly after that, we lost Eduardo Mortara in the Maserati as well. And we had a safety car. So now we've only got 15 cars going around the track. But fortunately, pretty much everyone else finished the race with a few exceptions we'll get to. Early on, it was being led by Maximilian Gunther in his Maserati and Sasha Fenestraz in the Nissan. Those two had a really good showing in Hyderabad and it was unlucky they got caught up in the Bird Evans crash that really dropped them down the field and they didn't score points. They were doing really well in this race as well and it was nice to see them leading from the front with Cassidy chasing them. Three young drivers doing really well. It's nice to see. This was when the issues started. I think the first victim really was Jake Dennis, who got a drive through for something, and Mitch Evans as well. Mitch Evans' series this year has just been terrible. He's had the worst luck. What happened to him in Hyderabad was not his fault. Sam Bird ploughed into him. This time, I think it was an overpower, which apparently, again, is something caused by the bumps around the circuit, and apparently it's just like a spike in power. Not his fault, and he got caught out. So, unfortunately, Mitch Evans missed out on points again. And as he was my pick to be champion, it is, of course, entirely my fault. So, he lost Mitch Evans. I think he was in fourth. So, he was going to score decent points if he could have finished. And then we had a few 
swapping around the attack mode points. And then Maximilian Gunter and Sasha Fenestraz was sort of... They were still up there, but Nick Cassidy was now leading. The gap was pretty close. I think it was another attack mode to come as well. That's when it gets confusing, the attack mode. See, if they just did it once, it'd be fine. But the fact that there's two and they can choose what time they do, I don't know. It just doesn't work for me. So Finistraz and Gunther are doing really well at the top. They're fighting with Nick Cassidy, who at one point got the lead. And then Gunther hit the wall. And for Maserati, this year has been a disaster because they have been in points positions a fair few times and things have gone wrong. This again, possibly Gunther's fault. I guess it was just a crash, just a mistake. But again, no points. And from a very high position. So very, very disappointing. This caused a full course yellow. And at that full course yellow, De Costa and Vern were able to jump Fenestraz. So they were now chasing Cassidy. At the restart, I think Cassidy had taken over attack mode. And that's how De Costa got past. Well, they just overtook him. We then had a fight towards the closing stages between jean eric Vern and Antonio Felix De Costa. It was always going to be incredible because the two former Tachita teammates have a history of bumping into each other. They didn't this time, but De Costa had to take attack mode. Vern got past him at that point. It looked like Vern was going to take his second win in a row, which I believe would be the first time ever he's won back-to-back -back races, which isn't bad for a double champion. You think you've done it by now. But De Costa pulled off an insane overtaking move that looked impossible. It looked like they were guaranteed to crash, but somehow he pulled it off. It was definitely the move of the season so far, and I'm struggling to find something in my brain to put together that would be better. So I can honestly say De Costa has probably earned the best overtake of the year already. It was incredible. Go out of your way to find it. It was amazing. And De Costa won for Porsche. So Porsche have won three out of five races. It's a shame Verline didn't score points, but De Costa is now in fourth in the championship and he's not too far off the championship race, which will make it very complicated for Porsche. jean eric Verne, after finishing first in India and second in South Africa, is right up there as well. Jake Dennis didn't score any points because of his drive through and obviously Verline crashed. Sasha Fenestras was on for good points as well, but he hit the wall on the last lap. So he scores nothing after a fantastic race, which is disappointing because I do like Sasha Finistraz. I've watched him in Japan and he really deserves something here. In fact, after the last couple of races, he really deserves just something. But again, no points. And going down the grid, Buemi got points. He got back up to fifth after dropping down to the back of the field after the Ver Verline crash. And Dan Tictum scored points as well in the Neo. He was sixth, which was a brilliant performance for him. Neo, who I said were going to finish last, have actually got a fair amount of points this year already. And they are ahead of Nissan, Maserati and Apt Cupra. And not far behind Mahindra. I think they might be on the same points as Mahindra. So again, me being completely wrong and entirely my fault. I guess they should be thankful for that. This was a really good race. I enjoyed it. There was plenty of chaos. It was a good track. It looked good. The scenery around it looked good. Honestly, I hope they come back here. It was a pretty spectacular race, despite the fact that we had a lot less cars on the grid than we should have. And my thoughts going on... Well, the championship at the moment is still between Verline and Dennis. Even though they didn't score, they had a healthy points lead coming into this one. And they still do after it. But I think it has opened up a bit, and you definitely have to consider De Costa and Verne to be in that title fight. Other than that, everyone else is sort of dropping away a bit, especially Jaguar, who I really fancied this year, but they've had a lot of bad luck. There's been mistakes as well. It's very disappointing for them. Second race in a row, they've not scored anything. And Evans and Bird haven't scored many points this year so far. Hopefully the second half of the year does pick up for them. Now we have a month till our next Formula E race, which, as I've been talking about a lot on this channel recently, I'm sure some of you will be very happy to hear we're not going to be looking at it for a while. But the next round is in Brazil. Lucas Degrassi's home race, so hopefully he's back on the grid for that one. I'm very excited for it. I do love Formula E, even if you don't. So, leave your thoughts in the comments below. What did you think of the Cape Town e -Prix? Remember to subscribe to the channel, and thank you to everyone who has recently. Thank you for watching. Have a good one.